Hello, I'm Caitlin Gowen and welcome to The Edge. I'm here today to talk about anxiety among teenagers and high school students. According to, to my source, anxiety has been increasing substantially since the 1950s. Studies have shown that teens and children nowadays have the same anxiety levels as psychiatric patients in the 1950s. Nearly one in three adolescents will meet criteria for an anxiety disorder by the age of 18. So about 33% of teenagers will be diagnosed and will treat treatment for their anxiety disorder. Only about 10% will be treated correctly. Teenagers do not adjust their anxiety and keep it to themselves, which is why their stats, the stats are so low. They need to be able to talk about it and ask for help. According to Healthline, keeping things to themselves is causing them to have more anxiety and causing de depression, which can also lead to them having a potential substance abuse and even a physical illness. Teenagers attend school for 180 days out of a year and have to get up every day worrying about something. School causes different levels of, of anxiety for every teenager and everyone has a way of deciding on how, they, on how they want to deal with it. According to The Atlantic, nurses and counselors cited increased amounts of stress, pressure, social media, and divorce are caused for anxiety among teenagers. A survey in 2016 from Psychology Today says that 25% of teenagers, a percent that is currently rising, are affected due to anxiety. Students are constantly getting assigned homework and teachers assigning tests and even having surprising pop quizzes. Some students are not very good at taking tests and having to take one can cause them to have test anxiety. Some may not even be able to finish the test. Teachers also assign public speaking assignments, which can be nerve wracking for many people. Parents add pressure by telling their children that grades matter and adding emphasis on performing well in classes. Students then start worrying about their GPA and wondering if they're making the qualifications to attend college. Wealth Management stated that a student's GPA is a greater predictor of a college success than their scores on ACTs and SATs. Schools encourage their students to take the SATs and ACTs because they help colleges know whether or not students are qualified to attend college. According to CNN, 42% of 1.7 million students who took the SAT in 2015 were, de were determined to be college ready. It showed that they did not need any remedial attention in English, language arts, or math when they get to college. That's less than half percent. That means that 48% of SAT and ACT test takers are not ready to attend college. Students are expected to get a certain number on the test and knowing what is needed to get on the test beforehand can cause even more stress. According to College Raptor, some ideas to help students decrease their anxiety for SAT and ACT include knowing what to expect from the test, studying and preparing beforehand, sleeping well the night before, eating a good breakfast and staying positive. These simple tasks can help decrease students' anxiety and make them feel more ready for their tests. Anxiety is different for everyone that experiences. Keeping your anxiety in and knowing how to deal with it can cause even more problems. Talk to someone about it no matter if it's your mom or dad, a sibling, friends, your school counselor, a teacher you trust, or going to a real therapist. I feel like there should be a class dedicated to coping with anxiety and having students who do not struggle with it learn about it so they can understand what their classmates are going through. Many students struggle with it one way or another and no one is very good at dealing with it. There should be a class offered that students may learn, take to learn about anxiety and how to cope with it. If you know anyone who is eliminating themselves from social events, being different emotionally, not getting enough sleep, and doing poorly in sc school, get them to talk to someone about how they are feeling. They deserve to ask for help and not face it alone. To, to discuss, I have welcomed Ms. Wiggle, one of Peters Township High School's counselors, and Mr. Sudol to talk about anxiety among students. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank Thanks. you. For I was just asking, like, when students come down to visit you, like, what is the main reason? I would say students come down a lot for a lot of different reasons. It is, I think it's very individual. Um, would you agree? Yeah, I would say some students will come down for either college or career planning. Mm -hmm. Uh, some students will come down for social or emotional issues such as anxiety or stress related. Uh, some students come down just to brainstorm and plan out their future. Some students will come down for academics also or if they're 
looking for kind of guidance in what they're doing in their class, you know, that way we can help them brainstorm and work through, you know, could you talk to your teacher, could you, have you considered getting tutoring, so those are other things that they would come down for. Okay, and do you think that it's helpful for them to come down and talk about what they're feeling, about, feeling inside and stuff? I personally think that it's important for them to talk with another person about it, even if it's not just one of their counselors, even if it's their teachers or their parents, because then they're bouncing off ideas of another person. Or someone might suggest something that they never thought of before that they could try. So that is letting them know the resources that are available and it's helping them brainstorm what they need to do in their next steps. So I think that it's very important for you to talk to somebody about what is going on. So that way you can, because you might not know what resources are available for you. Okay. Do you think some students should go to a more like professional one if it's like really bad? So I think, I think when you're thinking of anxiety in, in general, anxiety is a natural reaction. To, and it's uh, unease to an undetermined outcome. Mm -hmm. So uh, in school, there's just going to be more scenarios like that, whether it's a, a presentation, as you mentioned in your opening, or a test, or a college application. All of those have a, uh, an outcome that the student doesn't know what is going to occur, and so that creates anxiety, and so that is a natural reaction. Everybody's gonna have a little bit of anxiety every day. It's when the student's unease gets to a point where it is impacting their natural life uh, sort of cycle. So the ability to get up, the ability to eat, the ability to go to school, the ability to interact with their peers or adults, when it is impacting those things, then yes, students need to seek professional help. Okay, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think putting an anxiety class like to learn about it and like to help friends if they have it is helpful for students or do you think it's not? So I think it's, um, I think a class maybe as students come into high school, like a freshman seminar, when students go to college, they mo a lot of colleges will have a, a freshman seminar mm -hmm. class. And really the point of the class is to highlight, as Ms. Riggle said, the, the resources that a student has available to them, whether you know, a college campus, whether it's student health or student counseling, tutoring resources, where you go to uh, re-up your money for your housing or your food service. Well, in high school, I think you could have something very similar. Study strategies, where they can go for tutoring, uh, when teachers are available for extra help, whether it be before school, after school, or during the school day. And so a class like that would give the, the student tools to help manage their unease during the school day. And so I think a class like that would be helpful in, mm -hmm. in giving, like I said, the giving the students those problem-solving toolkit to be able to manage high school more effectively. I agree. I think a freshman seminar would be a good idea too because you know that's where you can touch upon how important self-care is for students. So you know if you're doing a lot of sports and you have a lot of homework and your course loads heavy you need that time for yourself so that you can de-stress and debrief and do something that you enjoy. Um, so I think it's important to touch upon self-care and then you know touching upon the coping skills and study strategies and just resources that are out there. So I think that that could be beneficial for kids. Okay. And you, like you said, like a lot of people go through anxiety and mm -hmm. stuff. Was it, did you go through it when you were in high school or college or? In high school, I think I have a little bit of anxiety <laughs> even today. So I think, um, <laughs> you know, what, you know, as I said, anxiety is, is a natural reaction mm -hmm. to, um, like I said, an undetermined outcome. So anxiety in itself is not bad. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, especially students, whether K through 12 or in college, you know, as, as you are testing your educational limits and you're learning and you're learning about yourself and how you respond to different types of educational situations, as you grow as a student, it's not always going to be comfortable. It's not always mm -hmm. going to be, um, happy, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. As you learn, you stumble, you get up, you learn again, you try, you problem solve. 
and somewhere in there that is anxiety. And so, yeah, I think if you are continuing to learn anything new in life, you will experience anxiety, but it's not necessarily bad. It's just a, an emotional reaction to something that you're experiencing. I can agree. I experience anxiety the same as anyone else would, but I think it's important to learn your own coping skills and mm -hmm. figure out what works best for you because what works best for me might not work best for Mr. Sudol. Mm -hmm. So if you like to sit and listen to ocean waves for 15 minutes because it helps you breathe, then mm -hmm. that's important. That's what you need to do and that's your coping skill mm -hmm. whereas it might not work for someone else. So I think it's just important to look through what coping skills are, what different scope, like ideas for coping skills and then just test them and trial and error and test them out and see how they work. And probably a big difference today is that I think as a culture we've become stress or anxiety adversive. And so what I mean by that is that when we see uh, somebody experiencing anxiety, whether it's one of my students or whether it's your friend or your brother or sister or your parent, it seems as though the first response is that I have to try to remove that anxiety from you and to mm -hmm. not let you experience that anxiety. And so what happens is that if I just remove that anxiety for you, well, you're going to experience anxiety tomorrow and I haven't given you, I haven't taught you any skill to be able to deal with that in the future. And so I think some of that anxiety sort of perpetuating itself is because we're not teaching mm. as much people how to deal with anxiety. We're just trying to remove it from their life, but you will experience anxiety and stress for your entire life. and so. The sooner, as Ms. Riggle said, that you come up with coping strategies, the better you'll be able to manage that and the less impactful that will have on your day-to-day -day -day functions. Okay. Uh, we will take a short break and we will be back talking about anxiety. I'm Caitlin Gowen and we are back with Mrs. Wiggle and Mr. Sudol to talk about anxiety. I, another question I had is why is anxiety like overlooked? Do you feel like it goes unnoticed sometimes and people don't realize that they're having anxiety? Mm. I would say, I think if you're experiencing anxiety, I don't know that you're overlooking it. I think mm -hmm. that, that you're, you know, that's a very visceral response to a stressful situation. But I think perhaps where the discussion point or sometimes the misunderstanding is that um, it's hard to dis differentiate between anxiety that is becoming uh, more of a situation where you need professional help versus mm -hmm. sort of a, a routine anxiety, something like we had talked about before the break, where anxiety is a natural sort of emotional reaction to a stressful situation. And so I think that it's hard for maybe our parents or people that care about us to think that our child or our son or our daughter are getting to a point where they need professional mm -hmm. care. And so it's more the not wanting to admit that kind of, that level of anxiety. I think too that it would never be overlooked. It's a possibility that students have developed their own coping skills. Mm -hmm. So when that anxiety does arise, then they have already worked through it on their own and are at ease. So I don't think that it's a fact of being overlooked. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a fact of, you know, either students are dealing with it on their own, which is okay with their coping skills, mm -hmm. or it's to the point where, like Mr. Sudol said, they would need professional help and that's when they reach out. Okay. And sometimes that could be, I think that can be sort of rectified through conversation or communication because, I mean, so often I think you would, uh, you know, you go to somebody and you're starting to express uh, feeling anxious or feeling stressed about something and how many times is the response back to you, oh, just deal with it, or that's just life, you have to come to grips. Mm -hmm. And so th there I think is just a generational gap where maybe our parents or some adults have developed, they've gone through the process of experiencing anxiety and they have come up with a system that has worked for them 
but they don't know how to communicate those types of tools for you. And so that is where it is good for a student to go to their counselor or teacher who maybe has some more experience teaching those types of, of tools. Okay. You guys deal with it all the time, like the ACTs and SATs, getting kids ready for those. And do how does students how do students like deal with like the anxiety of taking that test and getting a good grade? Um, I think they deal with it in different ways. I mean, coming from a person who had test anxiety in high school, you just kind of, it's something you have to work through and you know that if college is your post-secondary plan, that that is a test that you're going to have to take. But then you also have to think about and talk through the other things that the colleges will look at. Mm -hmm. So they're going to look at your resume. They're going to look at your personal essays. They're going to look at your letters of recommendation. So if you take the SAT or the ACT and you don't have the best score, that's okay because you have other things that you can that they can reflect upon to see who you are as a person. So it's not just based off of that test. And I think it's important that when students are feeling that anxiety around that, that they come and talk to their teacher or their counselor or their parents because then you can talk that through with them and say, hey, remember, that's the only thing that's not the only thing they're gonna look at. There's other aspects that are in the application process that they're going to check out. Okay. And I think even within the test itself, some of that test anxiety can be allevi alleviated through good preparation. So, you know, very in a very similar way, classroom grades. I think most students want to have the A or stress about having the A or stress about getting a certain score on the ACT or SAT, but they're so focused in on that end product mm -hmm. and not the process that you go through in order to be prepared either for a class or the test. So it's, you know, teaching the student to, okay, your goal is to get an A, your goal is to get a certain score on that SAT, and then the steps are the, the study process to prepare for the test that's going back to that process itself. Ultimately, it will alleviate that, some of that anxiety. Why do you think students worry about their GPA so much rather than like their community work they do in the, like in the community and like everything else they should be doing for college, they worry about their GPA the most? Well, I, I think that that is the sort of flashy part of a student's um, academic career. And so they feel as though if I have a certain GPA, then that will, that's the key to their future. Um, but in actuality, it is all the other sort of components. It's how well they prepare for a class or the test to get that A or that B. It is their community service and what they bring to the college. So I think that it's, it's teaching the student how to think about college as college is. So colleges are looking for what are you as a student going to bring to that college campus to make that college campus better. Yeah. And so is it going to be your volunteerism or is it going to be your activities? It's going to be your theater or your experiences. It isn't just your GPA. Mm -hmm. But I think over time s students become very focused and on that end, end product of just the GPA. And so I think too when students are looking into their post-secondary options and they decide that college is their plan and that's what they want to do, when you go into the admissions page and you click on what's required, the first two or three things that you see on that list is, call, is your high school transcripts and your SAT, ACT scores. So those are the first two things on the list and then you automatically think about when you think college and applying, you think GPA. That's the first thing they're gonna see. Mm -hmm. And my SAT and ACT scores, that's the first thing they're gonna see. So then when you, you kind of stop thinking about all the other things that go into play, because those are the only two things that you're focused on because that's the first two things on the list of the admissions process. So I think that has a lot to play with, mm -hmm. a, a lot to play into this as well. So maybe if college admissions offices would, you know, change up that list a little bit, it wouldn't put so much of a pressure on the GPA and the scores. Do you feel like students come down to talk to you about that stuff, like the most out of everything? I think it's sort of year by year. Yeah, I think nice. that we uh, try to teach the students throughout their high school all of the different parts that they need 
to consider and plan for for college. I think when s students are seniors, I think they do come in a lot to talk about that process and where their GPA is and whether they can still improve it or their SAT scores and they need to bring up their scores or not bring up their scores. So I think uh, s high school students tend to be sort of grade level focused on certain parts of their education. So senior year, they are very focused on <laughs> what their GPA looks like and how that's reflecting their capabilities or their SAT or ACT scores and how that's reflecting on their capabilities. I agree. You know, what your freshmen and sophomores might be thinking about is could look different from what your juniors and seniors are thinking about. Mm -hmm. It all depends on where they are in their life plan and what they need the rest of the time to get there. Okay. Do you feel like students feel better when they leave your office and like have a better understanding of why? I mean, I hope so. I hope, <laughs> <laughs> I hope that when we talk, they feel better and we can help kind of ease that or at least help them work through it. Um, I don't know if they do feel better, but I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> That's my hope. <laughs> so, have you ever like experienced someone having an anxiety attack, and like, do you understand like why they have an anxiety attack? Like, is there a lot of things that go into one, or is it just one certain thing that can cause it to blow up? So, I think when you encounter a student having an anxiety attack, you are doing a little bit of triage, because typically the student is probably having difficulty breathing or hyperventilating, and they're having a hard time sort of putting all of their thoughts together. So, in that moment, it is helping the student settle mm -hmm. to so that you can get to a point where you have a discussion of what led the, the student to that emotional state. Um, and then, typically, then it is a process. Sometimes it, it is immediate, sort of flash in the pan, something very drastic happened and the student had that visceral response. Sometimes it is uh, an ongoing issue with a uh, situation which they're having a hard time problem solving through. Yeah, I would agree with that. Okay. <laughs> Do you feel... Mm, wait. Do you feel like in anxiety for like even teachers that come into school every day, does, do you think it's beneficial for them to talk to someone also or come up and see you guys? Absolutely. I mm -hmm. feel as a person you shouldn't bottle up what you're feeling. I think you should reach out for help because we're all, we can only handle so much. We all are human. We have our limits and you wouldn't want to bottle all of that up mm -hmm. and then explode on the wrong person or just explode on something. and. So I think it is very important that if you're feeling something or you just need to talk it out with somebody, you find that person that you trust and feel that you have a rapport with and talk it out with them. And, and to make it effective and sort of meaningful to everyone, you know, communication is a big part of that. So I may go to a colleague and say, you know what, I just need to vent. I don't need any advice. I have a pretty good handle on what way I need to go but I need to vent out this emotion because mm. I'm really frustrated and so sort of go through that. Or, you know, you go to a colleague and say, okay, I think I have a handle of this. This is what I'm thinking. This is where I'm stuck. And so, you know, even within the, the faculty, you know, here at the high school, we are always bouncing ideas off of each, other, each other, trying to problem solve. We're mm -hmm. always going to see uh, the same situation from a different perspective, which is okay. helpful much like a student looking for a new perspective on their issue. Okay. Overall, how do you feel like the anxiety levels here at the high school are? They tense or? I, I think they're pretty high. I think that our community uh, is such that um, they demand a high level of success. And so, you know, aspirations are high for students, our students to go to, you know, good colleges or a certain level of colleges or to have successful careers or to be successful at each level. And what's difficult that it is managing that expectation against your day-to-day -day life. And mm -hmm. so, you know, the, the, the more active you are, the more active of a student you are, so participating and talking out and problem solving and reaching out to your peers and reaching out to your teachers and the faculty reaching out to each other, 
the healthier environment we'll have in dealing with that stress. If we keep our stress to ourselves and we try to you know, stay in our silo and, and not get outside feedback, then, then the environment becomes unhealthy because mm -hmm. we're not helping each other and the stress will just build to a overwhelming level. Okay, is there anything else you wanna add to teenagers? dealing with it and how, d how they c should deal with it. I just think it's very important for them to, you know, figure out what a coping skill is and what different coping skills they can use so they can start testing out these coping skills and finding what works best for them. Because even as they get older, those coping skills are going to follow them and it's going to help mm -hmm. them work through what they're feeling as they get older into adulthood. So I think it's just important for them to look for those resources and utilize them because that's why they're there. Right, so if they're feeling anxious in school, they should reach out to a trusted adult and start to go through that problem solving um, sort of practice. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you guys for coming in Thank today. you for having us. Thanks for having us. And this has been, I'm Caitlin Gowen and this has been Anxiety on the Edge. Mm -hmm.